All right, welcome everyone to webinar Wednesday here with Company Cam. Uh, take a few minutes, let everybody kind of fill in here. Uh, but we got an awesome webinar today with Eric Vargas, COO of Follow Up CRM. Uh, Eric, while we're letting people funnel in here, thanks for jumping in with us today. Yeah, barely made it with the hurricane coming in and something. I, so, <laughs> yeah, I actually. Uh, Internally, I was like, hey, if we talk to Eric, I don't know. I know he's in Florida. I don't know which coast he's on, but if he's on the east, the west coast. We might be in trouble, but uh, if the power, the power might go out. So if it does go out, you'll know why it actually yeah. went out once today. But, you know, there's generator backup. So awesome. Awesome. Well, appreciate you still still jumping in here. Rain, rain or shine. We got Eric. He's he's good. So yeah. Uh, I checked this morning. We still have all of our pool floats in the pool, so you know it's not too bad. Not too bad yet. Is that that's the that's the barometer, huh? Yeah, yeah. Usually they fly over the fence, things like that. So I love it. I love it. So, well, those of you joining us, we appreciate you jumping in with us today. Um, if you want to just let us know in the chat, uh, just to get accustomed to where the chat is, uh, where you're joining us from, that would be awesome. Uh, but yeah, let us know in there, uh, a few other housekeeping items before we kick off. Uh, you also have, in addition to that chat feature, the Q and a feature, uh, major differences. If you have a specific question you would like myself or Eric to answer, uh, use that Q and a feature. Uh, I'll be able to monitor those throughout the conversation, uh, but they don't get buried as much in that versus the chat feature. So, um, if you have a question, let us know in the Q and A. Uh, you can test the chat out. Let us know where you're joining us from. Uh, just kind of get used to that. Uh, and then at the end, obviously, we'll have time for questions. Uh, generally, if the question pertains to specifically what we're talking about at that time, I'll just kind of interrupt Eric. We'll get that answered. Uh, but it may be a question where it's like, "Hey, we'll get that answered," but we might wait till till there's a better opportunity to do so. So. With that, uh, let's go ahead and kick things off, Eric. Uh, maybe give us just the high level of your background. Obviously, I said you're with follow-up CRM, but go high level there, and then we'll jump into this thing. Yeah, so I joined follow-up CRM. Now it's coming on five years ago, and um, you know, super excited just to see the growth of the company, and we're actually now international. We, you know, we serve um, a customer in Jamaica who I have not visited yet. And then um, a couple of clients in Africa, actually, which is kind of interesting. So, um, yeah, so um, my primary areas of focus is uh, business development and product. So I'm excited to share with you guys, you know, how follow-up CRM has really helped Best Roofing and just the whole Best Roofing story. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say, honestly, Eric, you probably should go visit the uh, client you have in Jamaica. That would probably be... Yeah. pretty high on my list they probably need some yeah. some support down there so i would definitely fly in for that one uh but yeah let's let's dive into the the story of best roofing um and how they i mean that's crazy growth six to 60 million i've heard greg uh speak a few times uh really awesome guy great speaker uh and the story is awesome so let's go ahead and dive in there and as we're kind of going through this i'll probably ping some questions your way and then obviously those will joining us. If you have questions, let us know. We'll get those asked as well. Sounds good. So um, if you know Greg Wallach, or if you've been to like the IRE, you might have heard him speak before. And uh, I guess I will take it all the way back. So Greg was actually uh, the captain of the University of Miami at one time. And I mentioned that only because he hasn't changed his hairstyle since the 70s. He's had that red kind of Jerry Curl thing going on <laughs> for a while. And uh, I don't know how he fit, fit it under the helmet, but um, after he was the captain uh, at University of Miami, he started to work uh, for his dad's roofing company in Orlando. And that's kind of how he got his legs under him in, in the roofing industry. And then um, you might know Greg's name from a, epic, he calls it an epic failure <laughs> of uh, a, a roll-up called General Roofing back, uh, it might have been um, almost 15, 20 years ago now. And what he was trying to do was the first billion dollar roofing company. 
and uh, he was purchasing 167 um, roofing companies all over the country and rolling them up under the general roofing main. And um, he was just about to sign the deal and um, the year was 2008, right? So from there, uh, you know, we all know what happened in 2008. Uh, the deal just kind of, you know, fell through. And that brings us to uh, Best Roofing. He bought Best Roofing um, in 2008, just trying to recover from this, you know, massive um, roll up that he was trying to do. And Best Roofing was uh, a bleeding $6 million company. They were losing money every year. They weren't making any sales. And um, he went back to basics. He went back to the roots. Um, it was also a tough time, right, in 2008. So sales were hard to come by. And um, what he did is kind of going back to his football days and put in basic fundamentals um, to like, the, he calls it the blocking and tackling of sales to help grow his um, sales organization, service and construction over the years to, to be at 60 million this year. And you can look them up on the um, uh, Roofing Contractors Magazine Top 100. I believe they are number 16 or something like that within the country. They're definitely top 20. So um, that's that's a little bit of background on best roofing. And um, yeah, yeah, we can, I guess, hop on into the to the first slide. Yeah, let's jump in here. All right. So um, these basic fundamentals all start with tracking. Um, when he first got Best Roofing the first year or two, they weren't tracking anything. When a, lead, <laughs> when a lead came in, they wrote it down on a piece of paper or it was just in their mind. This was a, a screenshot from back in the day and um, they this guy had this spreadsheet, this guy had another spreadsheet, the front desk had their own spreadsheet, Greg had his own spreadsheet, and there was no unified way um, for tracking their leads, their bids, and their customers. So that is how kind of follow-up was born, right? Um, Greg designed follow-up to be, it was actually called bid tracker back in the day. So uh, bid log, bid log. And um, he would log all of his bids into bid log rather than kind of using the, the mess of spreadsheets. And um, this technology is called a CRM technology. And if, if you ever heard of that, you might have heard of like the big players out there like Salesforce. Um, Greg was actually inspired by Salesforce. Um, there was a Salesforce conference in Miami in 2008, and he actually went and he went to um, check it out to see if it would be a good fit for his company. And um, when he was at the conference, he realized like, okay, Salesforce is gr a great CRM. However, it wasn't tailored to the construction industry. It wasn't tailored to roofing. So that's why he decided to build follow-up CRM for himself because, um, you know, the way I like to say it is like 80% of CRMs, they all do the same thing, but it's really that 20% to make it really fit for me is what Greg, you know, was looking for. And what that comes down to is um, when you're bidding out to multiple projects. So if you're bidding to multiple GCs or you're trying to track like a commercial property management companies, that's where follow-up really um, has its strength in because, you know, we, we track customers, we track opportunities and, and contacts just like every other CRM. But then we layer on these 20% of features and integrations similar, you know, with company cam, um, to really serve this industry in this market. So um, if you're not tracking, use something rather than just spreadsheets. Um, I really would advocate for kind of just a centralized point for the whole company to go to. That way um, it's kind of like the company brain and everybody goes to the same file to make their updates and edits. So you don't have to chase people down around the office. Yeah, I, I love this slide, Eric. This, uh, it, resonates in a different way for me obviously company cam we're not you know logging bids but so often i talk to contractors that are maybe even ahead of their time in knowing that they needed to be using technology to help them in the field but they 
they didn't have that specialized tool. So like in, in our case, oftentimes they're saying, well, yeah, we're leveraging our smartphones and we're texting right. those or we're emailing those back to the office. And then Susan in the office is putting them into Dropbox or something along those lines, which is great. Like, you know, that you need to be doing these things. You need to be logging these things, but you lack that central point and you have all those extra steps. And it, like this slide just resonates with me because that's, that's the same thing. You could have the, you know, just photos in there and be like, well, some are on John's phone, some right. are in Steve's Google drive, some are here. And, and just getting that centralized place is so valuable for contractors. Yeah, and uh, Company Cam has a, a very similar kind of founding story to uh, to follow up, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, from, you know, born from the contracting space, solving a problem that, you know, technology's already was able to do these things, but nobody had said, hey, this is how it needs to be done in the contracting world. Right, right. And so, you know, going from six to 60 million, Cracking really is that uh, fundamental, right? The blocking and tackling of building a business. If you don't track, you don't know where you're going. You don't know where you're at, right? So if you're not tracking anything, it's critical. Um, a lot of people might complain about like data entry or something like that, but you'll never be able to grow unless you just know where you're starting, right? It's kind of like having a budget, right? It's just basics. Um, maybe it's... Um, Maybe you feel like it's too basic, but it's not. You need to track everything that you can so that you can make intelligent and um, you know, correct decisions on moving forward. And so once you have this foundation of tracking, you can move on to the, to the next step. So I'll go to my next slide here, track. Um, this is a screenshot of follow-up CRM. I think Elijah has a question of what kind of KPIs that we really dive into. Um, this is actually a live screenshot of Best Roofing's uh, account. And um, some of the main KPIs that Greg is tracking on a day-to-day -day basis are right here. Um, you have your pipeline, you have your closing ratio, you have your contracts that you won, you have your bids, and then you have your sales activities. These are the Again, the fundamental of sales, right? So what Greg knows here is that this dark blue category, these 31 bids, $21 million, he's going to, uh, $12 million, he's going to close these over the next 30 to 60 days because his salespeople have committed and put it into this sales status saying they have a verbal agreement from, from the customer that they're going to move forward with them, right? And then from here, all these other statuses that we have are you know, how close the customer is to be making a decision of are they going with best roofing or are they going with another uh, provider? So here you can see how many bids are in hot. You know, those are 60 days out, warm, a year out. There's some that are just looking for a budget. And, you know, those that are just looking for a budget, maybe they're a year, two years out, but you did all the work to create the estimate for them. It's super critical to just save that somewhere so that you can reference it, you know, every six months um, down the road. So we call that pipeline management so that you can follow up with all your opportunities, check in weekly, monthly, or quarterly, depending on when the customer's making the decision. Um, over here, closing ratio, you can see they're closing at a 13% on the dollar. And then we also track, um, on the bid or on the opportunity itself, which is 58%. Now, the difference between these two is pretty important. The reason why uh, he closes at a 13% on the dollar and then a 58% on the bid is because they have a really large service organization. I believe they have 20 something trucks by now. And what that means is those service opportunities, those quick leaks that they're fixing all the time, they're winning almost 60% of the ones that they quote to their customers. So um, in a service opportunity, it's kind of like first come first serve, or if you have that relationship, you're going to get the bid, right? So um, on the dollar amount, these are your, your larger half a million dollar and up type of opportunities where it can come down to price, right? So they win 13% of those, meaning uh, when 
they close an opportunity, it affects the closing ratio a lot more than those smaller $5,000 fixes. Here in the middle, you can see captured contracts, what his team has committed for the month versus his quota of 4.7 million. Over here is what they want to bid for the month. So what are they getting out the door with estimates? And what they know is if they, if they quote or bid 20 million in work and their closing ratio is 13%, they should hit their revenue objectives, right? And then from here on the right-hand side, we have sales activities. How many meetings are they going on? How many follow-ups are they doing? How many takeoffs are they doing? How many estimates are they doing? How many client meetings and how many proposals are being sent out? All these kinds of sales activities are the KPIs that they're going to be tracking within the system. So uh, Greg really believes, again, back to the fundamentals, if you are measuring um, the activities, everything else starts to take care of itself because you're doing the small things correctly. I love this uh, slide here. Question for you, Eric. Yeah. Going back to that top right graph there, I think that's really compelling. I don't know how much we want to get into the weeds, but I would assume Greg knows, you know, how much money he's making, you know, what the, what the margins are on those different yeah. jobs as well. Is that something he's leveraging, you know, follow up to track is also is like, Hey, these $5,000 jobs that we're going on, we're still hitting yeah. at a 45% margin. So there's still great jobs for us to be doing right. or uh, how are they, how are they dis discerning that information? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. That actually leads me to my next slide of insights, right? So um, all that you saw there um, was kind of like the high level contract information, but we also tracked the gross margin on these jobs as well. And so once you're tracking everything, then you can start to pull reports, right? So now when you're going from six to 60 million, like Greg did, uh, what he was able to do is pull reports and say, hey, what are my best performing opportunities to your point, right? So um, here we call this a customer profile chart. And um, in the beginning, when they were at six, seven, eight million dollars, they were just bidding everything that they got, right? Any request that came their way, they would just bid, bid and bid. And, you know, hopefully something would come back to them, right? And then after about a year of tracking, they pulled this report and then you're able to see, okay, uh, my highest margin jobs are these kinds of jobs or we win these kinds of jobs the most. And you can see here, right from this chart, that they win most of their opportunities for condo and multifamily bids. Everything else, uh, what's the second place one here? 13%. Um, let me see here, where is that? Is it banks? Nope, it looks like it's retail. Okay, so another commercial area there, right? So once they realize this, imagine you get a flood of leads coming your way. You have a hurricane coming in, right? Best Roofing's phone is ringing off the hooks right now, right? And so their front desk person is saying, hey, uh, this is Best Roofing. Um, tell me about your building. Oh, yeah, my house has a leak. And then instantly you know that this is not a Best Roofing opportunity because they do commercial roofing only, right? So they, maybe they refer them to a residential roofing company. Or let's say another lead comes in. Yeah, you know, um, my uh, school, my school, like maybe a, a local high school has a leak and um, instantly they know we don't do a lot of work with schools. So we're actually going to not prioritize this estimate over a condo or multifamily opportunity that comes in, right? So you only have so many people right? You, don't, you only have so many resources to allocate to these opportunities. And when you have a flood of opportunities, it's your picking of what you need to go after, right? So I believe they have about four estimators, and then they have a, a, team, a sales team of 15 people. Those estimators of four or five, it takes, you know, it could take a couple of days to estimate a, a, a job, 
Um, and when an opportunity, when those two opportunities come in, what are you going to take? You're going to take the school or you're going to take the condo. You're going to take the condo, right? And so over time, when they started to recognize these patterns and uh, insights from their uh, reporting, then they actually um, are able to really focus in on, um, you know, what they're actually good at. So you can see most of their work comes from there. Yeah. Well, and then that gives you so much more leverage, even, you know, in the absence of a hurricane, it's like, hey, where do we want to make sure that we're spending our networking dollars or our marketing dollars? And we should probably be going and hanging out at places where the owners of these condos and multifamilies are at. We should be yeah. getting marketing dollars spent in front of them right. you know, versus the hotels that is a pretty small portion of of right. that numbers. So I think just like knowing those numbers, being able to dive into that central location and basically saying like, Hey, we win these bids the most. I'm sure they can get down to the detail of like, these are also some of our highest profit margin jobs. These are the ones we want to go after. And I think almost specializing in to an extent, and that's such a valuable thing for contractors to, to know their lane, to stay in their lane. Um, I've, I've lived it here with company cam, you know, we, we know what we do. And instead of trying to do everything, we say, Hey, let's, let's tie our software to the CRM. Let's, let's integrate with follow-up CRM so that, you know, what we do well can push into what they do well. And we, we know what, what our specialization is. And I think, I think that's super powerful from, you know, Greg's perspective of saying like, Hey, we're, you know, back to a sports analogy. If you're a run first football team, you got to run the football, like don't come out and, try to throw the ball on first and second down and then say, well, we didn't get anywhere. I guess we have to throw it on third down, come out, do what you're good at and, and execute. And I think obviously this chart here really shows that for Greg. Yeah. And that a great, so you're, you're the segue guy. I love it. So <laughs> I'm gonna, that brings us to the next area is focus, right? So once you have these insights on what you're able to do, you can focus on these opportunities that are best performing for your company, right? So you'll see here, here there are a couple of uh, jobs that they just, actually this one right in the middle, this is probably getting hit by the hurricane right now. So, uh, but this was a, I think it was a three and a half million dollar job that they won. Um, and here, this is a commercial roofing building in Miami. And so just like you said, they're able to kind of reverse engineer where they want to go and find more of the opportunities that are best performing for, performing for that. For example, now they're going to um, you know, trade shows, right? They don't do online marketing because online marketing brings residential leads to their door, not commercial leads to their door, right? They have a really great partner network. So what do I mean by that? They work with a mechanical HVAC company. They work with um, commercial plumbing, commercial. Um, I mean, if you look at this roof here, it's not only the roof, right? There's electrical, there's plumbing, there's AC, there's a whole bunch of things that go in to putting in a new roof. So they have these partners that they're sharing leads with, right? They're going and meeting these property management companies. Um, I believe they work with... Um, two or three of the top property management companies. And you better believe that they're wine and dining these guys. They're bringing them into the facility so that they can, you know, they have like a, a studio here where they have like happy hours at the, at the best roofing office. It's, it's really honed in and targeted to their ideal customer. They're not trying to, they're not putting like, uh, you know, signs in people's yards because again, that's residential focused, right? So. Um, Greg says, stay in your lane. He says that all the time. He, he knows what he's good at and he has built a $60 million company on just doing one thing. But, and what he has found that you can go a lot deeper than you think in your niche, right? And actually, um, a lot of times that necessitates and qualifies you to actually have higher prices and higher margins. I think Greg has like an average of 50% gross margin on on his jobs, at least. Um, and on service, I think it's like 60 to 70. 
Um, Greg was telling me a story about the, the Trump building in Miami. Uh, I think it's in Doral, the golf course, the famous golf course. And it was a $4 million job. And uh, he bid it, highest bidder. They're like, hey, you're the highest bidder. I don't know. I don't know. Um, they didn't make a decision for three years, but the account manager would follow up with them once a quarter. Hey, just checking in. How's it going? Just checking in. How's it going? And um, after three years, they finally actually went with Best Roofing and Greg asked them, hey, why did you guys choose us? And exactly what you would imagine, they were the only ones following up with them over these you know, years. And so that built trust and you know, they didn't actually care that they were you know, $100,000 more than the next guy, right? Because they knew the professionalism that you know, those basics of tracking and following up um, and targeting and making sure nothing's falling through the cracks, they know the value that provided. And then they know that's gonna translate to them putting a new roof on their building with less stress and less issues. So focusing is, is really kind of putting gas on the fire and knowing what you're good at. For sure. I don't know that I can segue us to the next one. So <laughs> uh, yeah, I, this slide, I love this slide. I just love, you know, knowing what you're good at, staying in your lane. Um, and I, I use the analogy all the time of, you know, fishing in the pond that has fishes, fish that you want to catch. Like right. you can't, you're not going to catch a shark in a lake here in Nebraska. Like, if you want to go catch a shark, you've got to fish in the ocean. And, and that's what Greg is doing. You know, he's to your point, he's not worrying about fishing where the, the homeowners are at. He's worrying about, you know, doing these buildings. I would almost venture to guess that that super small percentage of residential on that previous graph is probably residential that they did for a person that owns a bunch of properties. And yeah. it was kind of their way of saying like, yeah, we'll scratch your back here on this one. So that hopefully we get all of your multifamily or all of your commercial buildings that yeah. you own as well. That's exactly right. They call it the friend of Greg jobs. You know, it's just, uh, you know, maybe someone locally or even like sometimes he'll donate a roof uh, to somebody, but that's obviously not their bread and butter not what, you know, they're going for. So um, really focusing, this is actually um, the hard part, right? You might get all these insights from your data and say, ah, yes. But then when a nice uh, residential roof comes your way um, that you can do pretty quickly and get a, get a profit on, you, know, um, you start to get distracted with other kinds of opportunities that come your way. So here, um, that brings us to company cam and follow-up CRM. Actually, Best Roofing is a mutual customer of ours. And that's our, um, we, we integrate. So whenever you take a picture in company cam, it automatically goes into follow-up CRM. And it just helps streamline um, the whole process. And especially with like the, with Best Roofing, you know, they're able to create report. They love company cam. They, I, they're pretty new. I think it's just about a year or so, but they, they fall in love with it. And um, they're really thankful for what you guys are doing over there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, again, this, this is a good segue because it's talking, you know, going from Greg knowing where they're good or what they're good at and doing those things. That's the same with, with both of our companies where company cam says, Hey, we're not a, you know, we're not a CRM we're a, you know, visual first communication tool for contractors out in the field. We want to build that tr truth and transparency on jobs. And then we want to take that visual first communication and move that to that central location. And in this case, follow up CRM for best roofing. Um, so yeah, love working with, with, you know, you guys as a CRM partner. Um, and I think it's one of those things where, you know, just building out that tech stack and it, it doesn't just come. I, I think it's a great point. You know, Greg built follow up CRM, Eric, you and I, I think have been talking probably since, about your first day at follow-up and you're like, yeah, I've been here about five years. I'm like, oh, I'm going on six. And I, I've known Eric for a long time. Um, and, you know, you don't build your tech stacks just instantly. It's kind of a gradual thing. And as you become inefficient in an area, you look for a piece of technology to to fill that gap. And obviously that's what Greg has done with with company cam um, and tied it to, to his CRM. 
Um, Elijah's got a question here and would love to have anybody else that has questions. Um, I would need a little bit more clarification on the processing of photo inspection lists. Um, if we're talking like actual in the field, how fast it's loading into your phone or <clears throat> what we're talking about there. But we do have the inspection list that you can customize so that in this case, you know, if Greg's doing all these condo and multifamily jobs, they can have their uh, multifamily inspection list and have their sales guys go out and do the exact same inspection every single time, which then would in turn hopefully speed up the process for those estimators because they're getting all the necessary pieces of information that they would would want on that job. So uh, maybe give me a little bit more clarification on that, Elijah. Otherwise, if anybody else has questions here, uh, please fill those in and I'll kind of let you kick it over to next steps there, Eric. Yeah. So if anyone's interested in follow up CRM or learning more about, you know, how best roofing built their businesses. So yes, we were founded by a commercial roofing company. We do also serve residential roofing companies as well as, um, you know, HVAC companies, any kind of contractor we work with. Um, that was just our founding story. And so from there, it just kind of taken off. But you can email me at evargus at followupcrm.com or just go to our website, request a demo and, you know, happy to chat with you. So if anyone else has any questions, you know, happy to um, see those in the chat, but that's all I got for you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Eric, thank you so much for jumping in with us today. Um, those of you that have joined us, appreciate you as always. Uh, we'll be back next month with another webinar. Um, one thing I can tell you is um, if you have, you know, if you haven't heard Greg's story, like I think it's one that's great to hear. Um, I would, you know, look into that. He's got some awesome, awesome things that he does in his business that I think are very unique that aren't, aren't things to talk about here necessarily, but just how he commissions his sales team and, and motivates his sales team. I think there's a lot of really unique things there. Um, back to Elijah's question, uh, Elijah, I'll have your, uh, customer success rep reach out to you and kind of do some digging into, see if they can figure out what the, the processing speed is there. Um, but otherwise, Eric, thank you so much. Um, and everyone joining us, thank you so much for joining us today. And hopefully we see you guys all next, uh, next month for our webinar. Great. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Awesome. Yeah. Stay safe in that hurricane, Eric. Will do. Thanks guys.